What's up YouTube, Drew here, and this is the worst job I have ever done. Um, I'm sure it wouldn't be as bad with a lift, but um, I've built a hot rod from the ground up without any money, without any tools. Um, I've done a lot, and this is the worst job I've ever done. So I'm gonna be very humble and uh, take at least partial responsibility, but the bolt hole right there that it looks like my finger's covering, not covering, not, see that one? That is for the idler slash tensioner pulley. I guess you could just call it the tensioner pulley on the timing belt on this 4.7 liter Toyota Tundra. They only put this motor in the Tundra in seven, eight, and nine. In 2010, the 2UZ motor was swapped out to a 4.6. Um, which is, I'm, I'm assuming, a UR block instead of a UZ. And I know for a f pretty certain that the steering rack on an older Tundra, a first gen, 2000 through 2006, where this motor was the only V8, uh, that it was a rear steer. That is, the rack was behind uh, the center line of the front axle. So anyways, that bolt hole that it looks like I'm poking right now, uh, like I said, I'll be humble and say that it's probably my fault. Nevertheless, that's stripped. This is this truck's second timing belt. I didn't, I mean, I've done many timing belts on Toyotas, um, 1MZ, 3MZ, also J35 Honda, whatever. Many timing belts, never been down this road before. I'm no rookie. Um, but again, being humble, I think I stripped it or the person before me and I did it together, whatever. So the threads that are supposed to hold the tensioner pulley on are now in the oil pan. This whole face that looks like, you know, that it unbolts, it does. Um, that is, in fact, the oil pump on this engine. And here's where we're at. I subscribed to Toyota TechStream, and step one, decharge the fuel system. You know, I guess pull the fuse for the pump and then run the car, it dies. Step two, disconnect the battery. Obviously, you've got to have the timing belt on to do any of this and then step three remove the engine and in that set of instructions step like 36 is remove the transmission so nevertheless this is an awful 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 job um, even with a lift even with toyota training i mean this is a miserable job so i'm trying to do it without removing the motor and i'm very confident that i'm going to be successful uh, first thing you need to know, the steering rack. If you take the steering gear off of it, which is at the top, the part with the spline shaft that comes in from the intermediate shaft that comes in from the steering wheel, two 12 millimeter bolts hold that on. If you take that off, you absolutely can get the steering rack far enough that way to pull the complete tie rod assembly up into the engine bay this way and lift it out. Um, Toyota says to take off the inner tie rods from the rack Again, I um, don't think you have to if, if you've got your radiator and your timing belt and your shroud off and everything. Uh, step, or part two of that is it's not all the way off, but it looks to me like I'm gonna be able to clear it. I mean, there's more than enough room to come down, drop the back a little bit more and slide it out. If not, I'm sure I can force the steering rack forward a little bit more without hurting it. Um, the other thing you'll notice is missing my truck is four-wheel drive. There's the differential. You're going to want to be mindful of these vacuum lines and some other stuff. There's blood on the floor. This has been real fun. Um, so your axles are pulled. You know, there's like a brake rotor chilling there. I, I don't know how I'm going to get this truck back together, but I will. You know, I think I've been through worse, just not with a vehicle I, you know, needed in less than six months. Um, but anyways... Your transmission cooler, not the thing in the front, but um, th this, I guess it's a transmission heater. So your transmission needs to be warm enough, but not too hot. This is where coolant comes from the engine to uh, heat up and, and cool down. I guess it, it, like I said, it does both. It's like a radiator or an extension of your car's radiator for your transmission fluid. There is a bolt that is going to be obvious right there. There is a bolt that's less obvious. You can see the back of the hole there. And then there's one that's way less obvious in this aluminum shield that goes up and over it that I don't know how I'm gonna get back in. Um, but then you can push that, be very careful. And then you see that bolt, it looks like my finger's covering it. Now it's not. That's 
the equivalent of this bolt. That's a bell housing bolt, if you will. One, two, three, and then the hidden one is four. Those have to come out. And then there are these two that are hidden in the access panel to the flywheel and the torque converter. And then there are 17 other ones around the, what's called the upper pan. So I believe that I have successfully reached this without having to pull the motor out of the truck. I, I hope and pray that that's the case um, because this has been a lot of work, but you know, pulling the motor out of a Tundra is no small task. So this is the route that I chose to go. If I need a little bit more clearance, uh, I do believe that I can get on the transmission bell housing here uh, with a block of wood rested but not putting pressure up against this disconnect my motor mounts which are a genius design by the way you hot rod builders i love these they have like these little pins that slide into these v-shaped grooves and bring the the motor home anyways loosen those and just a couple inches of jacking up the motor should give me a decent amount of love Okay, just, I wouldn't end this video, of course, without showing you guys, that is the pan. It did come out, fought me to the last second. As I had said when I started the video, my rack and pinion, I didn't take it all the way out. If I took off the steering gear portion of it, it would come all the way out, but I moved it far enough forward that once the, the back, kind of like the, the wing tips, if you will, of the pan were below um, the suspension cross member, I rotated it that way so that the front driver's side corner of the pan was past the steering rack and that only left this tiny little portion of the passenger side front corner of the oil pan uh, to slide out from underneath the pickup tube. Something else to know, um, the manual from Toyota calls for this spot, this spot, I'll show you guys those, um, they're to get and this is their words, not mine, a screwdriver in there and dry the pan down. That's something that you really can't do with the motor in the truck, but it has these super cool little wings here. And I put my um, nice pry bar, it's a, I guess like a, right there, that pry bar, I put it in there. And I used common sense, that's your sixth sense and probably your most important one, but I pulled down and I heard the glorious, glorious sound of the oil pan gasket breaking free and I smelled the glorious smell of crankcase. Um, so this was successful. I mean, there's still stuff that can go wrong in my job, but the purpose of the video is to show you guys that you can in fact remove the lower oil pan uh, to get to the crankcase, rod bearings, all that happy stuff. You can get to all of that, the oil pump. This is all stuff that can be done with the engine in the truck on a 4.7 liter 2007, eight or nine Tundra. They did not put the 4.7 liter in the 2010 and newer. Uh, and again, this truck is four wheel drive or at least it was until I did that. So this is Drew. Um, you know, the purpose of this channel is to give quick tips uh, to help you guys through, you know, little things that are, are helpful. Um, but every once in a while, there's something like this. I can't imagine this video is going to get an insane amount of views because hopefully there aren't people all over the place pulling the oil pans out of their tundras because, again, this was worse than a prison sentence. But uh, the channel has a lot of content for you DIY um, mechanics, um, maybe even some tips from, for some professional mechanics. And you're going to see a lot of cool stuff with hot rods, classic cars, and JDM. So uh, if this was at all helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I am, again, in no way liable if you hurt yourself or damage your property doing this. This is for demonstration purposes only. I can't see why you'd give this video a thumbs down, of course, because um, it was just to show you how to get this oil pan out. Um, it's not a lot of detail on, on the disassembly of the rest of the truck, but that wasn't its purpose. This assumes that you can handle uh, the differential removal, the steering rack, um, disconnection, you know, all that happy stuff. But uh, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Again, this is Drew, and thank you guys for your time.